Actually, before we start, let's just let's just open with a word of prayer. Father, we just thank you for your presence in this place already. We thank you that you bring family together, that you bring us around the table, that you bring us around each other, Father, that we can rub up against each other, that all the sharp edges are, are getting worn down just a little bit. Father, thank you that you are in this place. Thank you for today, for the freshness in the air and the sun that's in the sky. And Father, I just thank you that we can take this minute to just set aside time for you, that we can just sit in your presence, that we can soak up your love. And Father, I just pray that even as we come, even as we set our minds and our hearts towards you, Lord, right now, help us to be made aware of your, your voice. Help us to listen. Help us to know and be filled by your presence in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Will you stand with us this morning, please, if you are able? And if you're not, well, that's fine, because we still have the victory. And who gets us that victory? Jesus, that's right. So let's worship him together. We might start with song number one. Let my eyes, let my heart cry out. 
you're alive, alive. With an anthem we raise, our our voice proclaim, you're alive, alive. I will live by eyes and my heart cry out, you're alive, alive. Yours is the glory. 
The great unknown where feet may fail, and there I find you in the mystery in oceans deep. My faith will stand, and I will call upon your name. my eyes above the waves when oceans rise my soul will rest in your embrace for I am yours and you are
choice is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. And take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. And my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. And my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. And Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters where seen what you can do, O oh God of wonders, your power has no end. The things you've done before in greater measure, you will do again. Let's sing that again. We've seen what you can do, O oh God of wonders. Your power has no end. The things you've done before in greater measure, you will 
on but we know that God's got something more for us there's that chorus that says spirit lead me where my faith is without borders let me walk upon the waters wherever you would guide me church there's something going on in the spirit right now that we haven't seen we haven't known and it takes that little bit of trust that faith but God says if you ask it will be given Lord give us faith fill us up help us to overflow help us to be infectious in a godly way Consider an orchestra playing a symphony where there is a brass, percussion, string, and woodwind sections. A violin may produce a high pitch sound, whereas a percussion may be used to keep the rhythm 
and help all the instruments to blend and flow in such a cohesive and intricate way. Although important, a list of instruments doesn't exactly give a recipe or tell us how Beethoven's Symphony No. 5, for example, will sound. But yes, it is important to know that the instruments produce the sound, but not simply playing the instruments that creates the music, but more the way the instruments are so intricately connected and play off each other with their dynamics, balancing the melody and the harmonies that produces the music. All of which is intended and created by the composer in a way that works from the beginning to the end and incorporates each instrument. Now each instrument player typically focuses on their own part. Although they need to be aware of how their part fits into the overall musical composition. In reflection of our lives, sometimes we aren't always aware of how our part fits into the symphony until we see the big picture. The word of God tells us that God is the grand composer. He understands the great picture far greater than any of us, the instrument players, do. Isaiah 55, 8 to 9. My thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. The truth is, God has a different perspective and way of thinking that we cannot possibly comprehend on our own understanding. It is as if we have a veil over our eyes that only God can remove. Paul says in his letter to the Corinthians, For now we see in a mirror, dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I am known. Paul is telling us that we only see the story in part, but one day we will have full revelation. Now some days along the line, God gives us an insight into the big picture. As believers of Christ, who walk and look at God the Father, along our journey, we do get glimpses of the big picture that God is working together. And he brings clarity to our lack of understanding. 1 Corinthians 1 18. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are saved, it is the power of God. But then, of course, this raises the question why is it not foolishness for us who are being saved? Because we are given revelation into God's big picture a new insight into God's way above our own. We believe that God, Jesus Christ, came down to our level, to walk as a man, to face the same temptations common to every man and woman, to embrace humanity at its fullest, to love, to heal, and to live a perfect and sinless life laying down his life as a perfect sacrifice, taking upon our sins on the cross and dying for our salvation. And then to be raised up again three days later. 
Now through that, we are given an insight into God's big picture. That big picture is that God created the world, everything in it, and oversees and orchestrates all that happens. In his divine order, he shows his relentless pursuit for his people to return into relationship with him. To the point that reconciliation and forgiveness can occur. Through the gospel of Jesus Christ, for he is the key to restoring that relationship with God. Now sometimes God lets things happen that are out of our control and things that are beyond our understanding. But we can have comfort knowing that God has a plan for our life that plays in the big picture. Let's take communion together. Thanks, Daniel. Don't feel sorry for or fear for your kids. The world they're going to grow up in is not what it used to be. God created them and called them for this exact moment in time that they are in. Their life wasn't a coincidence nor was it an accident, nor is yours. Raise them up to know the power that they walk, that they walk in as children of God. Train them up in the authority of his word. Teach them to walk in faith, knowing that God is in control. Empower them to know that they can change the world. Now, this is about kids, but it's about you as a child. Don't teach them to be fearful and disheartened by the state of the world, but instead hopeful that you can do something about it. Every person in all of history has been placed in the time that they were in because of God's sovereign plan. God knew that Daniel could handle the lion's den. God knew that David could handle Goliath. God knew that Esther could handle Haman. He knew Peter could handle persecution. He knows that your child and you can handle whatever challenge that you're facing right now because he created you for it. Don't be scared for your children or for yourself, but be honored that God chose you to parent, to be a part of a generation that is facing the biggest challenges that we know. Rise up to the challenge. Rise up, Daniels. Rise up, Davids. Rise up, Esthers and Peters. God isn't scratching his head wondering what he's going to do with the mess that is the world right now. He has an army that he's raising up to drive back the darkness, to make him known all over the earth. Don't let fear steal the greatness that God has placed in you. 
I know it's hard to imagine our children and sometimes ourselves anything other than sweet little babies <laughs> that we want to protect and we want to be protected. That anything could ever happen that may be hard, but you were born for such a time as this. Church, as we, that's actually, those were words by Alex Cravens in the word for today in April, I think. But I've saved it because they were so challenging for myself. You know, as we bring our offering this morning, as we come and we're reminded again what it is that maybe we can set aside. It's not just our money. It's our time. It's our worry. You know, we waste a lot of time and brain energy on worry. Let's set it aside. Let's give it up. What can we offer? Maybe that joy. Maybe we can give that. God, if I gave you my joy, what could you do with it? What could he do with it? And let your mind run wild and let him draw it back together. Church, let's, um, if we're on offering, can we collect the offering, please? I was challenged. I've got kids, obviously. They're not perfect, but they're pretty darn great. They're great kids. And I know we think that about our own kids <laughs> most of the time. But there are challenges. You know, we're not perfect. But God says, you are created perfectly in the image of God. You are able, you are capable, you are mighty. Let me give you hope. Let me give you joy. Let me give you a passion and a, a zeal. Let me help you right now, today. And church, a little bit of that letting go is letting him breathe greatness into you. We don't have to take over the world immediately, but maybe just offering a word of encouragement today is going to make a difference for someone. I was at work late last night, and it was a really tough night. There were a lot of people coming through Maccas last night, i got to tell you. And at 11 o'clock, not everyone uses their best manners. That includes me. <laughs> Most of the time. No. Most of the time, I'm pretty well behaved. But sometimes people push your buttons, right? And they're just that little bit rude, and you're like, you don't have to be rude. <laughs> I didn't say that out loud. My brain was yelling. But sometimes our response to other people's behavior can change their experience. I had a super grumpy lady come in. She just wanted an ice cream. And she had to wait for five minutes because we were literally run off our feet. And I, I just took a minute. I just held it before I gave it to her. I held it. And I could see she was stressing. And she's like, I just want my ice cream. I've been waiting for a really long time. I just held it until she looked at my eyes and I said, thank you for waiting. I'm sorry it took so long. I really hope you enjoy it. And she just deflated. You know how we chicken up? <laughs> she just chickened down. <laughs> she just let it go. Do you know what you do can make that difference for someone else? It didn't cost me anything. It was just an ice cream. But she went home feeling a little bit different. This morning as we offer our money, let's think about what else we may have. Father, Father,
this offering is so much more than just a little bit of cash. You don't need cash. You own the cows on a thousand hills. <laughs> Not only do you own them, you made them. And you made the hills. But Father, as we step into this act of obedience, as we give you something that we thought was ours and was ours for a minute, can you use it? Can you use it in a mighty, wonderful way? And whatever it else that, that you're sort of nudging us about right now, that we are offering up this week, could you use that too? And in the using, can you change us just a little bit to look just a little bit more like you? in your grace and in your hope in this offering Lord just as you gave the greatest offering of all thank you Lord thank you for the reminder of your grace of the orchestra and of the conductor of the hope and the light in the darkness. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Church, so many amazing things happening. You know, August always feels a little bit like a rest period. You know, let's just, just take a deep breath. We're almost into September, October, November, and December. <laughs> just breathe. We've got a few things coming up again. We've got a hope gathering coming up next Sunday night. I don't know if you've seen this. This is so powerful. Hope gatherings in the park. I know it takes a bit. It takes a bit of setup and tear down and it takes a bit of preparing. And but if you're not doing anything on Sunday night, come. Because it's amazing to see the town gathering together and praising God, yeah? So powerful. And it's changing the atmosphere of the place that we live in for God. There are some amazing birthdays today. Andrew Strickland's birthday is on the 20th. Maria Strickland's birthday is on the 20th. That's today. Is it today? Yeah. Aiden Chris's and Robert Chris's birthday are on the 22nd and the 23rd. Adrian Jones's is on Friday. So many amazing birthdays. Happy birthday. We're going to just, um, I'm just going to pray for these guys. Father, I just thank you. I thank you for these amazing people, these mighty men and women of God. We thank you for their birth their being. Father, we thank you for the purpose and the purpose that they were born for. We thank you for the growth that you're breathing into them, the life that you're breathing over them. And, and Father, even as, as they take another breath, as they se celebrate another year of being here, Father, we just bless them right now. Father, we just pray that your presence would be mighty in their lives and over their lives. Father, that they would know the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living right now. Father, that they would know the biblical Christ, the God of all creation, who believes in them and loves them and has destined and purposed them for mighty things, starting with tiny things. Father, let this week be significant in their lives as they celebrate their birthdays. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amazing anniversaries. Peter and Michelle Haynes. <laughs> I love that your husband's way over the other side of Australia while you celebrate your anniversary. If you have Pete on, on your phone, just send him a message. He must be feeling it today. As you go and see him, Michelle.
<laughs> it was the woman that forgot this time. Uh, Bana and Stella on Wednesday. Wednesday. Congratulations, guys. Where's Stella? Oh, yeah. Father, we just thank you for this. these two couples. Father, together. You brought them together to be stronger together. And Father, we just thank you so much for them. We thank you for their relationship. We thank you for um, two people becoming one and for the decisions and the choices that they make for the two of them and for the families that they look after and care for and provide for. Father, we pray your financial blessings over them. We pray your emotional um, security and support. We pray for the challenges that they're going to face this coming week, and we thank you and celebrate with them for the victories that they've seen already. We just bless them and commit them to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, I'm going to quickly go through everything else, but Workplace Health and Safety and Child Safe Training Day is today after church. If you're a part of that, please be here. Here? Over there. Here. After church. Um, you can have a coffee. We'll let you. And then come back. Ooh, lunch. Um, marriage enrichment course is starting Wednesday evenings from the 23rd of August. This Wednesday for five weeks. If you're coming, we need your forms back. RSVP today. Today. Hope gathering, I've already said that. Uh, youth camp, 30th of September, the 2nd of October. See the office for forms if you don't have them, but we need them back by the 10th of September. If you are a youth, harass your parents. If you're a parent, harass your children or your husband, because there's four forms to fill out, so maybe he'll do it. <laughs> He's shaking his head. Um, if you have any questions, talk to Michelle before she leaves to go to Mount Isa. Oh, today. She leaves today. So talk to her after church. Um, Youth Life on the 22nd and the 29th of August will be run by Tash and Daniel. Woohoo! So please contact the, the office if you need to discuss transport. I can't read that. During office hours. There's a plan and Michelle's not going to change it because she won't be here. So if you want to change the plan, talk to Mel because she'll change it. <laughs> okay, that's how it works. Excellent. So we're going to watch a quick um, video thing about the lunch that happened yesterday. And then um, George is going to come up. Does George know about coming up? Oh, good. He knows about coming up. Thank you. And then pass it out. Come on.
So Mission Sunday, welcome everybody. It's great to be here. Could the stewards take up the, uh, the mission offering, please? There are two main points that I'd like to focus on today. And the first one is chaplaincy, because the chaplains are out there adjusting and changing the world of our, where our children are. And that's fantastic, because they're the salt, they're the flavour, and that's something that they can break down the barriers by just being present. And with the prayers that we offer up to them on the schools that they're in, um, it gives us a connection. The other thing is India. Please pray for India, as in uh, I received uh, news about the north and they're having breakthrough up there, which is great. But also we urgently need to pray about the uh, persecution and the brutality that's happening there with with people getting beaten and even even uh, murdered because of what's happening before their faith. So, you know, we, we are in a place where we can make changes um, through prayer, through a lot of different other things, and, and that's something that Daryl mentioned last week about uh, India and what's happening there. Now, I want to talk to you about Borneo because that's something that um, has really changed my life, and it's changed the perspective of me and what my heart is, and what missions means to me. And the smiles on their faces was something which really impacted me. Daryl's seen it before, um, but they it didn't matter whether they had little or whether they had a lot. They were so happy to be there at, at the village. And uh, it's something that from daylight till dark, they worshipped the Lord, um, they had a shared vision of, of different things and they were in the garden, they were sowing, they were, there were so many different things that people have just reached out and, uh, and made it um, a total difference. The, uh, during school holidays, the celebration there, well, that was amazing, five days. And um, there was, um, and Daryl might understand this, there was a Kampai Kampai and that was pretty, uh, pretty amazing because... Um, we, um, we just had such a great time. Um, God has ignited a passion in me uh, with the Dayak people. And the capacity of the children to love on everybody that goes there, they're just so happy. And behind me, you've seen some of the different slides there. And what I'm going to do, if allowed, I'm going to have a different one every every month just to show you what's happening there because it is just amazing what God is doing through Living Waters Village and also through what Ronnie has been doing there and support and we're supporting him so also Ronnie is going um, he's in Singapore today and then he's off to Holland uh, and he's preaching for six weeks um, at different churches um, around the area so please um, enjoy the, the slides because some of those there, I'll just see if I can sit down. That there is us walking up to the new airstrip. And this is one thing that Ron has got such a vision that's given to him. That's all the leaders. And that's amazing because that's all in there. Uh, that's what they're doing there. They've got an agi there. They've got this work crew that come in and they're just constantly building um, building after building improvements, extensions, um, and they've got a, a brick making factory, they've got um, sand, they've got loam, they've got an excavator that does all the. Um, that's Riza. Now, that's something you can see my little beard there, but he took a shine to me and I, I now sponsor him. He grabbed me by the beard and went, bah, bah. <laughs> so. Um, I'm not too sure what context that is, but uh, every time I came into the, the training centre, he would see me and come running over. And he just, that position there, he actually grabbed my arm and he pulled it around and put it on his chest. And that was so special. We're making tables for all the schools because you've got a primary, secondary, and you've got the, the little ones. So that's... Uh, all the visitors there, um, that's the high school. We've got one side on the left, which is for primary, and then the other on the right, which is a high school. 
that's all the different buildings there where we had the, the Bible study um, commissioning and, and their um, graduation. Um, yeah, so it's just amazing. That's the gardens that Daryl and I, and we walk a lot of times um, doing different things. That's Nehemiah House. Uh, and there's so much there. They're 11,000 litres. They've got two, four or six. So there's lots and lots of water, lots of fruit. That's the people from Holland. Um, that's another map of uh, Kalamatan and, and Borneo. That's a couple that's sponsored by um, a couple in um, uh, Gelatin. Yes, thanks. <laughs> that's all, all, uh, all the building works and, and that's uh, what's happening in a, another extension of, of uh, the outreach. That's a special spot because you can go down there and, and I, I went down there and just the quietness. There's, there's a few um, children buried there and people buried there, but the thing is it's such a, a, a place where there's Daryl. I'm not too sure whether he wants to have the rice today, but uh, yeah, so uh, we had rice, <laughs> rice three, three times a day, but yeah, he's very interested. You could see that. So yeah, so... We had a great time and I'm going to be forever changed. And, and if you want to sponsor a child, because all those ones behind you, behind him are there, that's Singapore Airport, that was just crazy. And then we went from there to, to Borneo. So, uh, and that's the, uh, the customs and yeah. But it, it's just amazing that um, the journey. And if, you're, if you ever want to go there, I encourage you to put your hand up because yes, it might be an expense, but you know what? It's life-changing for you and the person that you meet because we have made so many friends, haven't we, Daryl, with just the, the people from Holland and Belgium. And one couple actually went there for their honeymoon. They wanted to spend a week uh, with the Lord. So they actually went there, and that was just amazing because they had challenges. But the thing is, it was just great because the Lord loved on them and we loved on them. So... Thank you very much for your support um, and thank you for the generosity of, of me being there. But I'm going to try and have some of those photos every, every month so you can just see what's happening because there's lots and lots there. Oh, that's a mich uh, that was a, an outreach. Uh, Richard pray prayed and then he did an altar call and there were so many people coming up and then he called all the pastors up and they prayed. Um, uh, for release of the Holy Spirit and for, for them as they came up and gave their life to the Lord. So, Daryl, you can uh, come up and, and take over and uh, bless you as you come with your message. And let's give Daryl a hand. Hey, good morning, everybody. I think we better release the children. Children, you may go and... Have fun somewhere. Auntie Judy and uh, who else? Back. Bless them. Actually, Rebecca, as you just stand there a second. Rebecca's one of our chaplains. Actually, he's at the high school. But Gary, just lay your hands. Father, we, we thank you for our chaplains. And let Becky stand in for all the chaplains. Bless her, we pray. And bless each and every one of them, may the fruit of their ministry accelerate to a, to a level, oh God, that many children will be impacted with the love and the goodness of God in Jesus' name. Amen. We do have a couple of little kids uh, hitting the, um, uh, the, the track this morning. One's Bonnie's daughter, Sierra, and uh, I've got a granddaughter, Mia, that's uh, going to be down there at Peninsula Trials. And so, Father, be with them, touch them, and all those children, may they uh, be, be uh, inspired to, to greater levels in Jesus' name. I want to so uh, encourage us in the, in the area of, number one, firstly, the marriage seminar. It's laugh yourself to a better marriage, and if you haven't got a brooch, you get one. But it's, you, you can be a single guy and do this. It's absolutely life-changing, I believe. And you'll belly laugh for the first two sessions. And, and so we're doing this. It's a, it's a, be a DVD. But it's a, the, the whole heart of this is that 
We would strengthen marriages. And no matter where your marriage is right now, uh, I believe we all need to be strengthened. But then on the other side of it, it's a great opportunity to have it as an outreach because we can connect with those who don't know Christ through this. And so that's starting Wednesday night. Um, Ross and Michelle's Life Group are uh, hosting that to a degree uh, and working with me to see that happen. There's four nights uh, happening with that. And then the fifth night's going to be an opportunity for couples to redo their vows. And then we're going to have dinner together. Concerning hope gathering, I, I just, I, I want you to know a cost uh, to do with this so you understand the war it's on. That is on big time in our own community spiritually. I read a little report yesterday that close to 80% in America, uh, they did a survey, but close to 80% believe there is a God. And 48% believe there's no devil. I reckon he's done a pretty good job. If you don't realize you're in a spiritual battle by now, come in and sit with, sit with me for five minutes and I'll change your mind. But I want you to know, I, I became aware of the battle uh, that I didn't realize that had gone to a whole new level. I, as you know, I've been over in Borneo and I come back and first Thursday morning us pastors meet and Pastor Murray of the Baptist Church, he said, I, I, I'm, uh, I'm sorry to hear about Trish. I just found out about it. And, uh, and I said, uh, mate, that's, uh, I appreciate your heart and appreciate your prayers and the church prayers. But we believe it's just a road bump. We're going to overcome this. And by the way, Trish is here this morning. She had a chemo port put in Friday, and she's a little bit sore, but she's here. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And then Murray went on to tell me that his wife, Coralie, has been in hospital for three weeks. No one knew. And she has what they call joint cell arteritis she lost her ability to walk she's on androids steroids androids steroids yes right my head's not good this morning i tell you steroids she's been in hospital here for three weeks and they're saying another two weeks and then i said to said to Murray, you don't sound good. And he said, yeah, I'm not. I've got this on my chest too. I said, you got what I got. I said, I've fought this over in Borneo for three weeks. I get back here, I'm still fighting this thing and thing. And uh, and, and uh, f for the first time, I slept in a chair for half the night last night because I struggled to breathe. But, you know, it's spiritual. And I want us to pray for Coralie today and for Trish. But I want you to know there's a price being paid for the ecclesia to gather. We got, hopefully, we, we got the Seven Day Venice going to join us the next Sunday night. Hopefully, I'll hear tonight. But there's a cost. The devil hates the church getting together. And if you are wondering whether you should come or not next Sunday night, well, may you change your mind real quick and be there. And let's fly the flag and say, devil, we're going to poke you in the, in the face with wonderful worship and wonderful glorification of our God. Amen. We do have uh, the, a Tongan choir of, of, of 10 or so guys going to be singing. But it's going to be a great night. So invite whoever. It's not just for the seasonal workers. Invite but I just want you to make aware of the cost because I'm asking the Lord and I'm going to be sharing into this this morning. Trisha had a mammogram in February and so, so nothing and all of a sudden she's fighting a, a third degree uh, cancer. Just like that. It, it's the, 
This it ain't normal. And to hear that Coral is three weeks away, it ain't normal. It ain't right. It's very clear that we are, are, are temples of the Holy Ghost for a start. So how can sickness be be in our bodies? But secondly, we know that Christ carried our infirmity within his body as he hung upon the cross. Amen. By his stripes we are healed. And so how do we how do we find that victory? You've got to appropriate it by faith. You've got to stand by faith. No matter what you're feeling, what you're going through, you've got to declare the word of God. Amen. And so, Father, we just bring Coralie before you this morning. And, oh, we're, we're, we're so overwhelmed by, by, by Trisha's battle and to hear about Coralie's battle. Father, we cry out for, for your grace to abound here. We thank you that you're in with us within the fire. You're walking with us and you're taking us through us and, and we declare this too will pass. But in the midst of all, of all this war, we ask for more grace to be upon Coralie and, and her precious husband, Murray. More grace to be upon Trish. More grace to be upon the body of Christ that we would not underestimate the enemy and his hatred of the church gathering. We commit it to you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. So we all doing okay? We got a couple of baptisms this afternoon. And uh, that's going to be at Michelle's house before she heads off. And, and that's at 24 Seola Drive if you... Got a chance to join us for a half hour. The um, Colin, have, you met, I don't, have I met you, Colin? Not yet. Well, Colin's one of the men being baptized, and Ryan, yeah, and Ryan, who uh, I'm just looking for him, uh, he, he turned up after service last week and said, Pastor, I, I need to be, I, I want, want to get baptized. And uh, he's saved to the bone, this boy. So good. And uh, so let's pray for these two. But lay hands there, Daniel. Father, bless Col and, and Ryan as they prepare to, to make a, a wonderful, wonderful choice to be ones who, who firstly obey your word, Lord, but also to be, to be ones that declare the Lordship of Jesus Christ, that they are now found in him. So, Father, we ask for a precious time. We ask that God that they be so baptized in the Holy Ghost as they come up out of the water just as Jesus was and that they, they go on to serve you with a passion and zeal that, that would shape the, the devil's thoughts in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to remind you that this year is the year of the of the breath of God. Not by might, not by power, but by my breath or by my spirit, says the Lord. I want you to believe even today that the breath of God will come upon you. I don't know what you're going through or what you're not going through, but I know I could do with a fresh breath of God right now. And we're in a place of faith. Amen. We, we believe that God can touch us whenever. We used to sing an old song uh, when I first got saved, to get a touch from the Lord is so real. God can touch you right where you are. So let the breath of God come upon you this morning. <coughs> In Jesus' name. I want to remind you that the Holy Spirit is a person. He's not a force, amen. He's a third person of the Godhead. He has a mind, a will, has feelings, and is all loving, all forgiving, all merciful. And he wants to be your best friend. I love the Holy Spirit. You love him? He's your best friend. <coughs> I've discovered he can be lied to. He can be resisted, blasphemed, and quenched. But I know this. He's a promise of the Father. Hallelujah. But he's also the voice of God. And is the spirit of truth. He's a revealer of scriptures and testifies of the Lord Jesus Christ. To every son and daughter of God, he is a teacher, comforter, 
a leader, a revealer of truth, and living water. Out of your belly will flow living waters. Amen. When we receive him, he gives us the power to live a victorious life as witnesses for our Lord Jesus Christ. And the fruit of him in your life and my life should be love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I don't know how many of those fruits are growing in your life, but I'm a little bit like Anita sometimes is you've got to look hard for the fruit. But I know it's there because the Holy Ghost is within me. Amen? Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And so as we understand the Holy Spirit is the one who strengthens us, I would not be here this morning if it wasn't for the Holy Ghost. He inspires us, encourages us, calls us in the ministry, sanctifies, convicts us, intercedes with us and gives us gifts. But I have two questions for you. <coughs> By the way, I am healed. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Because it's very important for you to live a victorious life. And it's time for us, if you have received, to press in like you never have before for the more of God. So often we focus upon speaking in tongues, which is initial evidence. It's a great gift and it is a gift. The gifts of the Spirit are so important. But there's so much more in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and I just encourage you to keep pressing in for the more. But this morning, I want to declare to you the Holy Spirit can be trusted. He is trustworthy. And what, what a great blessing or great revelation to have in this world we have today when so many people or government or you name it, we can't be can't be trusted but the Holy Spirit can be I want us to take a moment to look at Jesus his ministry as he walked as a man on earth we know it was only three years from the age of 30 the Holy Spirit came upon him when he came up out of the water and he baptized by John the Baptist but it's amazing we think well here we are saved to the bone and ourselves and fill the Holy Ghost. Everything's going to be just great. But as we look at Jesus, first thing that happens to him after he gets baptized with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit leads him into the wilderness. Well, Jesus, time for a 40-day fast. Now, for you and I, we'd be saying, hang on, I don't know if that's the voice of God. For 40 days, the Word of God says he was tempted by the devil. And at the end of 40 days, the devil encountered Jesus in such a way. And, and of course, the Word of God tells us Jesus defeated him by the Word of God. But the good news was he returned from there in the power of the Holy Spirit. And then the Holy Spirit led him into teaching in synagogues. Man, he got himself in trouble there, didn't he? Or was it the Holy Spirit getting him in trouble? The good thing, though, was he began to cast out demons and heal the sick. I believe with all my heart God's taken us to a whole new level. And there's a cost to be paid as we learn how to walk in a new level. I'm talking about a level of authority. I was speaking to Pastor Sammy, and he and I were discussing what, was hap what I saw happening in, in Kalamatan, and he was telling me what he saw happening ministering down at Rockhampton. He said, this woman, I've never, I prayed with her, and she got slain in the spirit, and I, and I really felt to get, get, her, get back up, and I got the catches to bring her back up, and, I really felt the press on her heart and got angry with the sickness in her. I said, do you know she got totally healed? Another man had been sick for, for, for years and he, he accepted the pain in his stomach, got healed. I believe God's bringing 
you and I are to a place where we're moving in the power of God like we've never seen before. And I'm not talking about a pastor or, or, or someone in a five-fold ministry. I'm talking about everybody. I'm talking about the, the army of God. Of course, you need the five-fold. That, that's to, supposed to be, firstly, to equip. Amen? And so as we look at uh, Jesus' ministry in Luke 4, verse 38 to 41, it says, Now he arose from the synagogue, and he just taught there, and entered Simon's house. But Simon's wife's mother was sick with high fever, and they made request of him concerning her. So he stood over her and rebuked the fever and left her. Immediately she arose and served them. How good is that? I did that with my wife this morning. I said, honey, can you iron a shirt for me? She did iron it for me. When the sun was setting, all those who had any that were sick with various diseases brought them to Jesus, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. And demons also came out of many, crying out and saying, You are the Christ, the Son of God. And he, rebuking them, did not allow them to speak, for they knew he was the Christ. What amazing, amazing ministry Jesus had. But he said, Greater things than these you will do. That just means, I believe, my interpretation of that is every one of us has meant, been meant to walk in the power of God. So instead of just have one Jesus getting around, there should be millions of us. Amen? And so as we take a moment and put yourself in Jesus' place, the Holy Spirit led him to choose 12 men. One betrayed him. I'd be complaining about that. I've been complaining about Simon Peter because Peter denied him. Because the Holy Spirit chose, led him. And the Holy Spirit's leading you. And there's times you're going to be thinking, I've made a mistake, I've messed up. But the Holy Spirit leads us to do things and, and make choices. And we think, wow, did I really mess up? Or has God got a bigger plan, which we heard earlier? I love to think how big a plan God has. And in Jesus' case, we know that the Holy Spirit empowered him to be the sacrificial lamb. And in our Western Christianity, we complain when we get a cold. I saw some I mentioned this last week, I think. I saw some video f footage of what was happening to pastors and leaders and women over in India. It would make you physically sick. And yet we get out of bed and don't even think about whether we're going to live or die, but they, they wonder if they're going to live tomorrow. I often think of those Christians in North Korea. That's the worst of any nation. But what about Ukraine right now? You know, they were starting to think that God had forsaken them. But all I'm here to tell you this morning that you can trust the Holy Ghost. In Matthew 27, 45 to 46, it talks about Jesus' death upon the cross. It says, now from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness over all the land. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Ali, Ali, Lama, Sabatani, that is my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You know, I can understand what Jesus felt like that, even though he knew it was the will of God. Because so often... I feel, God, you've left, you've left the, the planet. Where are you? Have you ever felt like that? Every one of us. 
Lord, where are you? Have you really forsaken me? I want to get real this morning. Is that okay? Because sometimes we think we've got to be so religious that we won't allow ourselves to be honest with God and ourselves. I'm here to tell you it's okay to be honest with God. He, he, he won't be offended. But I'm here also to tell you you can never trust your feelings. Because you will feel at times you've been forsaken. And then you can look at situations in your life and think, Wow, where's God? Where's God? Well, I'm here to encourage you to say he doesn't move. He's a God who keeps his promises. Amen. The word is truth and everything else is a lie. As I was sitting early in the morning, I said, Lord, I feel like you've forsaken me, but I know you haven't. Because your word tells me that you'll never leave me nor forsake me. In the 28th chapter of Matthew, in verse 20, if we look at 19 and 20, We'll read that. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Because we'll be doing that today. Teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you. And what's the Lord say? I am with you sometimes. Come on, you've got to get this right deep into your spirit because at times you'll feel very lonely with God. You'll feel it's only you and, and your wife or you and you. But the promises of God are yea and amen in Christ Jesus. And Jesus cried to see out at the cross. He felt like his heavenly father had forsaken him. But aren't you glad? Because today we have freedom and a relationship with God. Because the plan was always your and my reconciliation. So as you look at your life, I wonder what's going to come out of what you're going through. Because the Holy Spirit's leading you. You can trust Him with your whole heart. You can go to the bank. I was going to say, if you're a gambler, you can put your whole house on it. That He will not forsake you. He's going to lead you in the good things. And at times, I say to the Lord, I would do things so much different. I don't like sickness. I don't like pain. I don't like lack of sleep. I don't like a lot of things, but guess what? I encourage myself by reading about Apostle Paul. He got so excited as he was ministering with the other, other apostles and, and, and prophets and Antioch, and all of a sudden it says in, in Acts 13 too, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit, he's the Holy Spirit again. He's in everything. And I pray he's in everything of your life. Amen? He's your best friend. The Holy Spirit says, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I've called them. And then having fasted and prayed, they laid hands on them and sent them away. Oh, exciting time for Paul and Barnabas. How great. We've been called to God. We've been sent out. Oh, Holy Spirit's leading us from town to town. Just about every town, he got persecuted. And one time of his life, he's heading back to Jerusalem. They told him, don't do that. There's a warning here. He said, that's all right. That's the Holy Spirit's leading me. Hey, 
hang on a minute. Your prophetic words come saying, this is going to, what's going to happen to you, Paul. And he said, it's okay. Because Paul had a deep revelation. Everything that happened to him built the kingdom of God. Everything that happens to you will, if you believe with the Lord in this, will build the kingdom of God. Everything. No matter how good, bad, or ugly it looks. And this is the passage of Scripture I encourage myself with. Paul's encouraging the Corinth church that some of the ones that they think are apostles aren't, and, they, and he's talking about who he is. In verse 22, he said, Are they Hebrews? So am I. 2 Corinthians 11. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. Now, this is where we get a bit serious. Because remember, it's the Holy Spirit leading them. And he says, In labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequently, in deaths often. He actually died three times, Paul. From the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes minus one. Five times. How would you like to get that once? Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. The night and the day I have been in the deep. In journeys often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of my young countrymen, in perils of Gentiles, and so forth and so on. In weariness and toil, in sleeplessness often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Besides the other things, what comes upon me daily? My deep concern for all the churches. But Holy Spirit, why would you not lead Paul out of that and not into it? Because there's a bigger plan. Oh, to see this town and river transformed. To see the families that don't know Jesus at this moment full of all sorts of nonsense in the home get saved, healed, delivered. To see the children are getting abused and used, absolutely set free. The young adults singing suicide today, finding Christ instead. Are we willing to pay the cost? Because the Holy Spirit wants, wants men and women in this community saved. I got no idea why the Holy Spirit's led us through sickness, but he has. And the moment it happened, I, I said to my wife, I believe God wants us to go through this. I got no idea because I know God can heal today, moment, right now. In fact, Tricia could even be healed. She's going to go through it. Because her blood check test, if you're under 30, you ain't got cancer. Hers was 27. Amazing. Pastor Sammy's gone through cancer, going through cancer. He meets with the doctors in two weeks' time. He told them, when I sit before you next time, you'll find no more cancer in me. By faith, he chose a way. Coralie's sitting up there in the hospital. She'll be wondering, what, what's going on? But there's a bigger picture. And I, I, I want, want to encourage us never to feel sorry for ourselves or any other brother and sister. Come alongside them in faith and speak faith. Hallelujah, Trish. We're not sorry for you at all. We know God's leading you through this, but we declare that Jesus is your healer. Amen. How about you stand with me this morning? Romans 8, 14 says, As many as led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. Lift your hands to, to your Heavenly Father right now. Sons and daughters, we stand in your presence, Lord. And we want to thank you, Father, for the promise of the Holy Spirit. 
We love your presence. We love how you minister to us and through us, Holy Spirit, how you are our best friend, how you reveal Christ to us in an ever-increasing way. It's just amazing. But we want to repent today and apologize for any time we've complained and, and, and really spoken out that, that you have forsaken us. And we declare today that's a lie. You never will. And we ask you to forgive us, O oh God. And just breathe on us afresh this morning that we would stand strong no matter what storm comes, no matter what raging river we go through, what mountain we have to climb. You're with us, Holy Spirit. And you're leading us, and we give you permission to lead us wherever is, is the Father's will that we would see this nation of Australia turned back around to its rightful place. We'd see our community, oh God, that families have never even heard the name of Jesus. How can they be in Australia? But it's the truth. So, Father, we surrender our hearts and our lives afresh, and we declare our future is secure in Christ. And the Holy Spirit, as you lead us, oh, hallelujah, we declare over each of our lives, this too will pass. This too will pass. And we decree in the heavenlies, Holy Spirit, that you are trustworthy. You can be trusted. And we choose to trust you with a whole heart. We will not lean on our own understanding, but we will acknowledge you in all things, knowing you'll lead us in the right path. So, Father, touch every heart in this place this morning. You know ones who are just a, a week in their journey right now, just strengthen them. Oh, breath of God, come upon each of us. We have, all have needs here this morning. And, Father, I pray that, that anyone who's unwell right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, your word says you've given us authority to trample over scorpions and serpents, over all the power that the enemy possesses. Therefore, we take authority over the work of infirmity, the work of disease or sickness, and we break it over every household, over every person in the name of Jesus Christ. And if you're online this morning, we declare broken over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. We break that work of the enemy and rebuke it from your life in Jesus' name. And by faith we say, be healed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be healed, beloved. Go from here with a strength that's of God. Go from here with a fresh hope in your heart because he, you can go to, to the bank with, he, with that hope in your heart knowing that his name is Jesus. May the joy of the Lord be your strength, knowing that the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And we all say, Amen. Gary, can you come up and let's sing that song, Oceans? Because I want, to, want you to speak this out by faith, this song. Because it's so powerful in the sense of what has been said all morning from the beginning you came. And so as you sing it, you're free to, to leave as well, but um, save for a coffee. But let's just make a, a, a statement of faith here today as we sing this song. Amen? In Jesus' name.
out upon the waters, the great unknown, your feet may fail, and there I find you in the mystery, in oceans deep, my faith will stand. I will call upon your name and keep my eyes above the waves. When oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace. I am yours and you are abounds in deepest waters, your sovereign hands will be my guide, where feet may fail and fear surrounds me, you've never failed, and you won't.
Father, we thank you. We thank you for the courage, the strength, the peace that is in us. We thank you that the devil runs scared because Christ in us can make a difference with an ice cream cone. Yeah. <laughs> Father, thank you for your message of hope this morning. And church, as we go from this place, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May his face shine upon you and give you peace. In his name, in the name of his son. Amen.